Hi, my name is Tolo Eros. I'm the founder and the executive chef at the Cookie Jar Bakery and Eros and Gourmet Foods. I really love the fusion of Nigerian and European cooking, but today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make something I really, really like melon soup. It's probably known as egusi, and I'm serving this with a very aromatic basil leaf semolina. It's going to be really delicious. Stick around and I'll show you exactly how I do it. Let's cut this down into small chunks. All of this goes back in that bowl. A lot of us shy away from making Nigerian food, especially guys like myself. We're always used to doing continental things because of how quick and easy it is. But today I'm going to show you guys very quickly how I can make a very nice egusi soup by prepping in time and following some very quick steps. But before I start, I'll grab myself a nice glass of wine so I can relax and enjoy myself in this kitchen. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with the thing that takes the longest to make, which will be the snails. I'm making a seafood egusi, and um, I'm using a mix of snails, I'm using a mix of shrimp, some periwinkle, which was so hard to find. But if you can find it, lucky you. If you can't, tough. All right, so shrimps, snails, periwinkle, and some tilapia fish. I'm going to use a fillet of tilapia fish, which I'm going to sear just right at the end so it can come in nicely. But the snails are the first thing I want to start with. So I'm going to season this real quick with some stock cube. Just one stock cube because there's only four snails. I'm going to add some, some dry pepper to this, OK? And then I'm also going to add some salt. Just about half a teaspoon of salt should do this. Okay? The snails have been washed. It's very important when you're getting snails that you get them to wash them really well. So you don't have to deal with the, the getting out of the slime. Okay? And here I have some dried onions, which are really good here. So dried onion goes in. And then I'm just going to season this guy down a little. So to make this faster, once this is seasoned a little, I'm going to cut this into little bits, pop that on the pan, and get that steaming away. Okay, so that's well incorporated. Let's cut this down into small chunks. All of this goes back in that bowl. The smallest pot I got in my kitchen, put that on really high heat. Okay, once that heats up, I'm gonna add the snails in there, get that cooking. And whilst that's cooking, we're gonna move to the next, next thing, which is the stock. All right, so I got a tilapia. And I pretty much use my knife to take, around, take away the meat from the bone, and that's called a fillet. So over here, I have a really, really nice fillet. Now, I'm going to use the fillet much later, but for the stock, I want the bones, I want the head, I want some of the skin. I just want all the juices to really flow in the stock, all right? So I'll grab another pot, and I'll start putting together all the things for my stock. So first thing goes in. Next, some onions. I'm not really particular about how the onions are. I'm really only using the, the juices here, so I can cut this anyhow I like, all right? So quick down in the pot, one whole onion, all right? Don't worry about changing your board. I know it has some fish stock on there already. It's all going in. It's all part of the juices we want. So we just want some slices of carrots here. And what we're trying to do here is get some aromatic spices going, you know? Uh, so carrots go in. I'm going to use a really little, little bit of um, um, ginger here. So a small root of ginger. Just cut that up into smaller chunks. All right, so the flavor works really quickly. All right, one garlic would do this. So again, just cut the garlic into half so it can work really quickly. OK, and finally, I want an aromatic herb. A celery is what I would traditionally use, but celery isn't as easy to find as some other herbs. So if you find in the store, you can get some basil, you can work with that. If you can get some fresh coriander, you can work with that. But if you can't, skip that bit. I like to use some basil here. Right, let's leave the stock for a second and check on the pot for the snails because I feel I think it's ready right now. Yes, it is. It's pretty hot. I'm just going to pop the snails right in. Okay? And immediately I pop the snails in, I'm going to start stirring that. All right, now what it's doing is it's burning off any extra slime, all right, and sealing in all the flavors. 
And to that, as that's happening, as I can't see any more slime, I'm gonna add about a cup of water. Okay, gradually, it's going in. And I'm only adding the water a bit at a time. So that's about a quarter of a cup pressed. All right. Cover that. Okay, so there we go. Under heat, high heat, and in there, four cups of water. In that four cups of water, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of crushed onions, just so that it can release those fragrance in there. And finally, some black pepper. A few seeds of the black pepper goes in. I like to use the fresh black pepper because it's still very nice and fragranced. All right, so that's in there. Put a lead on this pot and give it about 20 minutes of cooking time. Check on our snails, toss it just a little as it was drying out. And the more it dries out, the nicer it is. Now over to the fish. I'm gonna season this fish really lightly and then I'm gonna sear it. And searing is gonna seal all, that, all those juices in. It's a filet. Um, I have very few bones in there. So I'm just gonna quickly pick out one or two that I can feel. Because um, I don't really like people picking out bones from the food when, I'm, when, I, when I've cooked fish. Two fillets of fish. I'll start off with some seasoning cubes. Just a little bit there, just a very little bit. And I'm using this mostly because I'm making Nigerian food. Um, I'm making a Nigerian style. Um, we like our seasoning, seasoning cubes and a lot of things. I'm gonna put in a pinch of pepper, salt, some dry pepper. So that's that for the one side. For the other side that has the skin, I'm going to intensify with some fish seasoning. Okay. And just rub that in lightly, bit that down. And then I'm gonna cut this guy into cubes. So just run the knife right in the middle. Skin of tilapia can be a little tough. All right, and then just good chunky cubes should do. So these ones are cut down, just set them aside. Okay, and then same thing with this other one. So right down the middle. And there we go. And that's that for the fish. All of that can go in the fridge, cover with some cling film, and pop that in the fridge. All that good stuff goes in. Fish and everything, okay? It's just gonna squeeze down with any extra juices out. Right, so our stock has been on the fire for about 25 minutes or so. It's just about right to drain. So we're gonna take that off. Oh, it smells so good. All right, so straight into a strainer, all that good stock goes in. Fish and everything, okay? So it's gonna squeeze down any extra juices out. I wanna get as much juice out of the fish as possible. Just squeeze everything out there, okay? It's good. With this stock, I'm going to make my paste for the agussi. Right now, it's a bit um, hot, so I'm gonna take some of the stock out, and I'm gonna pop this in the freezer to cool down just a bit. I'm gonna start making the base, the tomato base, which is gonna make a huge part of my soup. All right, so first things first, palm oil. I just want about a quarter cup of palm oil to coat the base of this pan. All right, let's make that half a cup of palm oil. This is a wider pan. I want it to really coat the bottom of the pan. And while that's heating up, 
The next thing that goes in will be the onions. I'll follow that with the tom tomatoes. And finally, the peppers. I'm gonna let that fry a bit and then I'm gonna make the paste for the melon. I'm gonna tell you a little more about this, this melon soup that I'm making. It's, it's a seafood melon soup um, that has a, a mix of tomatoes, onions, peppers. I'm keeping it light with the seasoning with just some dry pepper. I'm put, gonna put some crayfish in there to intensify the fish flavor. It's gonna be really delicious. I can hear my fire heating up there. And I'm just gonna put in one whole chopped onion. Okay, so let that caramelize a little, diffuse some of the flavor from the onion, make that soup, that, that soup a little sweet, all right? And then after that, I'm gonna toss in the tomatoes and then the peppers, all right? My stock's in the fridge, it's getting cool. That's gonna go into the melon. I'm gonna make my paste and gradually drop it into my sauce. You ready? Let's get started. So as you can see, this is dried out now. I'm just gonna add the last bit of the quarter cup of water into that. And I'm doing this because I want to really have a, I want the flavors to be nice and intensified. I'm only adding it a quarter cup at a time. Total of two cups of boil this, this down on heat that's not too high so it doesn't burn out, okay? Back to the tomato sauce. Onions are in, in the palm oil. I'm gonna add one teaspoon worth of tomato puree. And I'm just going to melt that down into the sauce. All right, so the tomato paste has melted in there, and now three whole tomatoes, fresh tomatoes goes in. The fire is on high heat, and then we're gonna add one chopped atarudu, which is scotch bonnet, all right? And that's our paste there. Put a lid on that, and let that cook down. All right, so the tomato base for our stock is well on its way. I'm gonna season this now, very lightly, with seasoning cubes. Two seasoning cubes go in there. Okay, pinch of salt. Some dry pepper, a pinch of dry pepper. All right, one teaspoon dry crayfish. I'm gonna add some more just at the very end. Stir that down, okay? And now we check on our stock. I'm gonna put enough stock to make a paste. So a little at a time. There we have our paste. Now to apply the paste into the stock, I'm gonna use a teaspoon and I'm gonna gradually start adding in my paste in lumps, okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can have nice lumps of egusi. I'm going to cover this down. Okay, so that's it for the melon. I'm gonna let that simmer on there for about five minutes so that it can form and doesn't scatter around as I cook through the rest of the sauce. Next things I need will be my stock, my shrimp, my periwinkle, my fish, high heat on my pan, Canola oil. Two teaspoons of oil there just to coat the bottom of the pan. A fish that was nicely marinated a while ago. And with the tongue, I'm just gonna grab skin side down first. All right, so leave that on the pan for two minutes whilst we stir our egusi. Now using a wooden spoon with a flat edge, what we're gonna do is gradually just work our way around it. At this stage, we're gonna add in our stock. We add the periwinkle. Our snails goes in now. Cover that and let that simmer away for another few minutes. Flip the fish over to the other side. All right, so two minutes on the other side. Oh, smells so good. As you can see, it looks really good. That's a nice char. The juices are sealed in. As you can see, it's still dripping out there. Just leave that in the pot. Just let it cool down in the pot for another few minutes, and then we can add it into our stock once that's ready. Fish goes off the heat to cool away. Give the soup a quick stir. 
all right? And then I'm actually going to leave this open so it can reduce for another 10 to 15 minutes. Once it's reduced to about half the, half the level, I'm gonna add some fresh melon into that, thicken that sauce a little, and add the vegetables, our shrimp, and everything should be done. And we'll jump on straight onto our basil leaf semolina. Stick around. I'm gonna carefully just pick out a good portion of the soup and just fill it up in there. Okay, now I'm gonna add some of the dried melon, dried blended melon. To this, I'm adding three tablespoons. A bit more there, okay. And now, so that my shrimp can cook, I'm gonna toss them in now. Just over that, put that in. Okay, all right. Next thing that goes in is the ugu. Ugu is actually pumpkin leaf, and it's been chop washed and chopped, and that's going right into the soup. All right, so right over the ugu, I'm going to add in my fish, just one at a time. All right, so that's that. And finally, for some very herby, nutritious goodness, some bitter leaf that has been washed. It's very, very important that this bitter leaf is washed really, really well. And you don't want too much of this, just a little bit there, about two tablespoons worth of washed bitter leaf. Cover the spot, reduce the heat, let that simmer for another minute or two, stir, and we're pretty much ready to go. All right, so final bit, the semolina, all right? I, it's predominantly just made with hot water in a pan, but this time around, I'm gonna add some aromatic herbs to this, just to give it a nice color and give it a nice flavor. So I'm chopping here some basil leaf, which I've already used for making my stock. Like I said, everything would marry well. Just a little bit of water. I'm only making semolina for a few people. All right, so the basil is in the pot. It's simmering away. Now I'm going to show you a trick on how to make sure you never get any lumps out of your semel. First thing you do is put some water, cool water, in a bowl. All right. And then you put in the semolina. All right, just stir that down into a paste. And now we're going to add this into our boiling water. So that goes in and immediately you start to stir it in. And if it's still too liquid, we can add some more semolina, just a little bit at a time, just to absorb any extra moisture you have. Because you don't really want like a really soft semolina, you know, you want it to be nice and dry and starchy. Okay, so just put this down. Even though with this process that I have done, I'm assured that I wouldn't get any lumps. So now next thing I'm going to do is put just a little bit of water. Okay, just a little bit of water in there. And this is really just to cook down the wheat. Okay, check it around there. All right and cover this for about a minute. All right, so it's been about a minute or two, and at this point, our wheat is dark cooked properly, and I'm now gonna just give it a good beat down, okay? Just give this a good, good, good beat down. All right, so plate, one lump of this. Dip that in there, then just use that to Get a good form out of that. Now, in this jug, I have some water and a few drops of oil. I'm just gonna use that to spread down the center of our 
SAML. And finally, the soup. Oh, this looks delicious. So I'm gonna carefully just pick out a good portion of the soup and just fill it up in there, right in the middle. Make sure you get some fish, some of all that goodness. Okay, and to garnish some of our bitter leaf. Finally, some of our basil right at the top. All right, and we serve that with some chilled white wine and it's finally time to taste. And you're gonna watch me taste. Let's give this a good taste. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Guys, this is definitely a swallow you want to try. I'm not a huge swallow fan, but this I'll try any day. This is one of those things that you definitely want to try at home, not one of those things you don't want to try at home. Take a picture, post it on Instagram, at Chef Eros, and for more info and more recipes, check www.ebonylifetv.com or cheferos.com. I'll see you next time on Chef